Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. This is the third episode of the series regarding uh, navigational controls. Uh, so for those of you who have followed these tutorials, uh, today I'm going to actually uh, connect all the bits and pieces so that the whole navigation with the pages work together. And for those of you who haven't followed the tutorial, I'm going to put the link uh, to both uh, previous uh, episodes. So please go ahead and check them out first. And now, without further ado, let's get started. So just to go over an overview, we have a container and then we have a panels div, including our uh, sort of uh, panels here. So as you can see, we have four panels defined in the CSS. We gave them different colors. And going back, we have a div with our arrows control, one for right, one for left. Each of them uh, is an SVG with the path that we generated in the first tutorial. And then obviously I have an unordered list giving it a class of navigation, which represents uh, represented by these circles down here, right? Due to the time limitation I have, I'm not going to go with vanilla JavaScript. I'm going to use jQuery. And I've already included it, so clicking on this gear icon, you can see that I've already added jQuery. Basically, this means that you have to include jQuery for this project to happen, right? So I am going to start by writing document dot ready. And I'm going to pass it a function, right? So what I need to do is that I need to detect the click, right? So I know that in my HTML, I have this navigation with its LIs. So in jQuery, we're going to select it like this. So I'm going to say uh, dots navigation LI, and then on the click of each of those, I'm going to pass a function, right? And well, basically, one thing that I want to do is that when you click on it, I want that specific circle to be selected, right? And in CSS, we have already created a selected class, which makes this bigger, right? So when you use the click handler here and passing a function, I can refer to that element that I'm clicking on using, select, using this, right? So I'm going to use this, add class, and then select it right so when I click on each of these you can see that uh, the ones that I click get selected but obviously first I want to deselect everything else so what I need to do before adding the class to the selected one I'm going to choose uh, navigation all the LIs and I'm gonna remove class selected right so now if I click on each of those you can see that the previous one that was selected gets deselected, right? So this is the first step. The second step is that I want to get the index, right? Basically saying, is this the first one, second one, third one, or the third uh, or the fourth one that I'm clicking? And based on that, I reveal the uh, respective page, right? So we have four circle buttons down here, and in my HTML, I have four panels. So based on the clicking on each of these, I want the respective panel, first one, second one, third one, or fourth one, to reveal, right? And in order to do that, first I need to get the index of the one that I'm selecting. In, in, in jQuery, the way to do that is that you're going to select, uh, using li selector, so basically this selects all the li's, and then I want to get the index of the current one that I'm clicking. And as I said before, using dollar sign this, you refer to the one that gets clicked, right? So I want the index of this, right? And I'm going to put it in a, let's say, variable called index. So having that, now I can say panel dot equi, like equal, my index. So basically, all the panel. So basically all the divs with the class panel, and I want the equi, the one that is the current index as I clicked on it. So this refers to zero, 
So this one is now zero if I click on it. This is the first, this is the second, and this is the third, right? And then I want the CSS, Z index of that particular one to be, let's say two, right? Now if I click on this one, you can see that the tomato one gets selected because the second one, the second panel in the CSS have a background tomato. The third one has background yellow and the fourth one has background blue violet, right? So if I click on this one, it should show yellow green and if I click on this one, it, it selects the blue violet. The problem now is that if I click on these ones, they won't work because we've already assigned two to the ones that are already selected. So what I need to really do is that here before actually click before actually doing that, I need to apply Z index, let's say zero, to all of them. Right? Now if I select this one, this one, this one, this one, none of them work because obviously there is a dot here, extra dot. So if I click on this, tomato, this, yellow green, if I click on this again, you can see that the tomato <clears throat> gets selected. And we shouldn't forget that when we open the page, the first link should already be selected, right? So to do that in the HTML, the first one, I will already initialize it with the selected class. Also, in the CSS, I need to give Z index, let's say one or two, something bigger than zero on the first one, right? So initially, right now, uh, the first page, which is blue violet, is selected, and also the first index is selected as well, right? So, so far so good. Everything seems to be working. And uh, now, this navigation works. The second part of this tutorial is making these navigations button to work as well, right? We know from our HTML that we have the first one with the class left and the other one with the class right, right? So in my JavaScript, in my jQuery, when the document is ready, I'm going to say when I click on the right one, let's start with the right one. So click, I pass it a function, and then what I need to do is that I want to, whenever you click on this one, obviously you want the index to be one more, one more, one more, right? So I will define a new variable on top of everything else. I'm naming it current index and I initialize it with zero, right? And when I click on right, I want the current index to be current index plus one, right? Meaning that I want the index of my current to be uh, equal to one, right? So whenever I click on this, the index gets uh, more, one more. But the problem is that I also need all the options that I did here, uh, here inside this function when I click on the right as well. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a new function here. Function, let's call it set page and then I ask for the index right and then what I'm going to do is that I am going to move these two commands inside my function and I would definitely like to change oh it's already indexed so we're good here so what happens is that uh, I am also gonna remove these and move them in the function as well and make sure that because we don't have this here I have to pass like this so instead of this I'm gonna say navigation li the one that equals index this index that I pass to have class selected right so I moved pretty much everything uh, to here and I change the this because we don't have the function within here anymore I'm gonna pass the index of it which is this one as you can see and then I just need to say set page and then my index and here as well I need to call that function instead of index here I have defined it current index so I'll pass the current index right so right now when you click on this this option will work right uh, and obviously 
what I need to do when you click, let's, let's select the first one, when I click on next, it should go to the next one, right? And you can see how nicely these two, these uh, items get reflected as well when I click on next. So let's select the first one, when I click, you can see, uh, well, the problem though here is that I have to first check here because when I click on this, it just adds to the current index. But now we have only four items, so I need to put a check here. So if current index is more than three, is, sorry, less than three, right, add one to the current index and also set the page. Otherwise, don't do anything, right? So as long as our current index, when, I'm, when we are clicking on this, is less than three, this operation will work. Otherwise, there is no meaning to, you know, because we don't have any more than, uh, you know, four pages. And as you know, the index starts from zero. So zero, one, two, three. So anything more than three doesn't make sense. The same way we want to do the same function for our left arrow right what i'm going to do is that i'm going to copy this paste it and i will put left here so here on the click of the left if current index now instead of uh, less than three it should be more than zero so as long as the current index is more than zero i'm going to make sure that i subtract one from the current index right so now if i play with this tomato yellow green and violet and if I press this this one if I press it anymore it, it wouldn't do anything because the index is going more than three so not, nothing happens and if I go back now you can see that the animation goes back right and the same way you know you can apply this now the problem is that when you define the index here you should also update the current index when you click on these circles. So what I'm going to do is that every time I, I check the index of, this, of the li that is clicked, I set the current index to index, right? And as a matter of fact, I can as well pass the current index here, right? So right now, if I click on this obviously nothing happens the problem is that I just removed the current index here so current index equals to index right so now you can see that these items these navigations pretty much work in a nice fashion so so far so good uh, I'm happy about it uh, you can do a lot of other things for example <coughs> if the current index is more than three here you want to make the opacity of this one a little bit less so that it kind of gets disabled or apply a disabled class but for now we're good now what i want to do is that now that i know that my navigations work the way they should as you can see uh, what i need to do i'm going to go to kotus.com slash kodichi um, and i want to get one of the codes uh, let's say um, Let's say this one. And one of the functions that CodeT provides is that, uh, sorry, I clicked on the wrong button. So I'm going to just click on this code and I'm going to here say embed in your page, right? So here, when you click on this icon, you have the possibility using normal HTML or iframe to include this in your HTML pages, right? One of the things that I want to do is that, you know, I know this color is yellow green, right? So what I need to do, I'm coming back here. I'm going to change the first panel to be of the same color as yellow green, right? And when I'm embedding my code here, so again, when you click on this embed in your page, you get this. I also want the header to be the same color yellow green. So I'm going to go to Google, I'm going to type yellow green CSS and you can see it kind of gives me the color here. This is the hex of yellow green. I'm going to come back to 
to uh, this uh, embed page here, uh, I'm going to change the header background color to that color and I remove this hash from it because you don't need it. You can see that now I have a very nice sort of unified header color as well and obviously I want the accent color from this kind of violet color to be let's say white. So FFF. -F. Looks good. I'm going to copy iframe here and then I'm closing down this going back to my original one going to the HTML and in the first panel I'm going to paste it right so now you will see that we have this very nice uh, sort of uh, embedded code that we got from another code here uh, visualized over here and by clicking on the next one we, we can go ahead and add different things based on the same color and not only you can see the result but also you can click on each of these tabs up here to get the corresponding HTML or CSS or JS tags. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you like this tutorial please go ahead and like and share it. If you haven't subscribed please go ahead and subscribe and if you had any concern or any questions please feel free to put a comment uh, and let me know what you think about it. So I wish you a very good day and night and uh, see you next time. Goodbye.